the the bird napping of Big Red took place around January of 2004. My name is Scott Gavin, and I was Big Red's handler, the mascot coordinator here with the Cardinals from 2000 to 2011. Um, thousands of appearances, lots of game days, lots of fun. Um, Big Red was a big part of my life, and I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> I like Big Red to arrive at events with some flash. And at that time I had purchased a, it, it was a 1997 red Chevy Tahoe, 20 inch shiny rims on it. I mean, it stood out. I remember it very vividly. And a friend was coming down the ramp and asked if I wanted to go to QT and grab a quick snack. So I left the car and went over to QT. From QT, at the time, you can see across. And I was in the very first spot. And so when I came out of QT, I knew it was gone because it wasn't there. I don't know if you've had a car stolen, but that initial feeling, like even if you lose your car in the parking lot, your heart kind of skips a beat. And it's, it's weird because you just, you get tunnel vision. You, you lose track of time and space. And so I darted across the street, played a little frogger, went around the facility, went to the back parking lot, talked to a, a friend upstairs and said, hey, did you move my car? And no, the vehicle had been stolen and Big Red was in it. And he'd been burdened out. Well, my name is Rick Knight. Uh, started with the Arizona Department of Public Safety way back in... Uh... Uh, 1981. Worked for them for all these years and ended up being a lieutenant. And during that time, the Cardinals were looking for somebody to come over and, and walk with Mr. Bidwell during football games. Getting Rick Knight involved, uh, Rick was very ambitious about making the recovery of Big Red. Well, it's kind of funny to think, you know, somebody stole Big Red. I mean, of all things, you, you know, you do that. He had a great investigative background and I almost feel like perhaps he took this as a challenge. So, you know, he came in, told us, you know, hey, my car was stolen. They took Big Red. Obviously, with it being a bird napping, he needed to get all the details. And um, we needed to proceed with a, a plan of action for it, really. A few weeks had gone by and there was no sign of the vehicle and no sign of Big Red. I had a voicemail and it was from the Phoenix Police Department. The vehicle had been recovered. This is the police department. The missing vehicle you've reported has been recovered. I understand you've recovered my vehicle. Was there a giant red bag in the back of it? It's not in the notes, but if you would like to come look at the vehicle, we can make arrangements for you to come to the impound to see it and gather your belongings. My first visit was down to the impound yard to see the vehicle, and they brought the big red Chevy Tahoe back, and I told them they had the wrong vehicle. It was completely different. I mean, of course the tires and rims were gone, but the door paneling was different. The window tint was different. And I said, this, this isn't my car. And they said, actually it is. So I didn't even open the doors. I went right to the back and popped open the trunk. And it was filthy and it was an, a mess. And there was no big red bag, but there were autograph cards. The big red autograph cards were still tucked into the side. And I knew that Big Red was gone. Scott Gavin. Yes. I have Big Red, and I'm holding him for ransom. Um, how did you get my number? Your card was with Big Red. How do you know, how do I know you have Big Red? I know there was just an article in the paper. I'll prove it to you. Rick, Rick, I've just been contacted by the burnapper. 
He said he still has Big Red. Contact? How did he get your number? Yeah, he saw my business card and was vague, but he said he'll prove it. Listen, Scott, this is a delicate situation. We need to figure this out. So what do we do? Guys like that are only looking for money. If we pay, there is a risk we'll end up empty-handed. We need him to show that proof that he has Big Red. Proof of life. Oh, good lord. First the bird napper calls, and now I have Big Red Shoe. I'd say call him. Let's try to meet up. I can. I don't have a return number. He calls at random times during the day from a payphone, and I'm at his mercy. Hmm. No return number? But he did leave a return address. How about we go check the mail? No, listen, it has to be in here somewhere. Okay, let's go forward a little bit more. Stop, 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 back, back up a little bit. All right, go forward. Can you slow that down just, just a hair? What's that? Right, right there. This is our guy. Is this all we got? Can we enhance this a little bit? Scott, next time he calls you, you got to let me listen in, man. There has to be something else. We're just missing it. What is this? Did you get my package? Yes, I I got a shoe in the mail. See, I have your bird. Now let's talk money. Well, I can't give you the money, but let me talk to the powers that be. Maybe there's something we can work out. But I can get you some merchandise from the team shop. I can give you some t-shirts and sweatshirts and hats, but do the right thing. You have Big Red, and we want him back. Do the right thing. No. We don't negotiate with bird nappers. And even though we had a rapport as the phone calls increased, whenever it came down to the ransom, the more that I told him we weren't giving him money, the more he seemed to get irritated about that. But he built this relationship with the guy, and I'm kind of laughing. I'm thinking, this guy, you don't build a relationship with a bad dude. And, you know, don't, don't do this, you know? In a way, it let me know that Big Red was okay. And I don't want to say we developed a friendship, but I think I was gaining some trust, and I feel like we were on a path to recovering Big Red. And we worked hard on trying to, trying to get this guy to meet with us, you know? Rick called me into the, his office, and asked how comfortable I'd be wearing a wire. Well, I told him if it comes down to it, we want him to wear a wire. But, you know, you know, Scott's brave to a certain point. <laughs> so I think Rick may have been disappointed that I wasn't ambitious enough to go get Big Red wearing a wire. Of course, I was talking to law enforcement the whole time. We were setting this up with, with law enforcement to make sure I had, I had some of my guys there that were going to be able to take them right into custody. One of the things we were gonna to do towards the end, we were, we we're gonna meet them at the Circle K at I-10 and Baseline Road. Okay, Scott, we're in a neutral location. Both entrances and exits are covered. Try calling the last number he contacted you with. Let's see if he still answers or shows up. Once he's in the parking lot, he's not escaping with Big Red. We had that set up, ready to go, and then the guy never called back. It's like, oh. But he also became more desperate to give Big Red back. In one of his last messages on a voicemail, he said, hey. Hey, Scott, I still have Big Red, and I don't know what to do with him. I'm leaving the country, and I'll call you tomorrow. And he never called. You know, it's kinda, it, was, it was kind of an interesting situation. 
I was excited. I was hoping that we were going to be able to, to get back and, and catch those guys. Because the funny thing about it is that I'd only been retired two years when all that happened. And I still had all that, you know, police in me. I still love doing the things in law enforcement. I feel like in his heart, he knew that something was wrong, that he had done something wrong. And I think he wanted to make good on that. But at the same time, he wasn't willing to, to negotiate either. You know, that's why you, you, I know what happens is they get hinked up. This is taking too long. This guy isn't the guy that's going to be able to negotiate with me. And, and, and I don't want to get I don't want to get caught with this big red outfit. I believe big red is down in Mexico, somewhere in Mexico, living the life. Maybe he went all the way down to South America. I don't know. Who, who knows where he ended up? I hope he's I hope he's doing well though. That's all I can tell you. So I'd like to think, or at least I choose to think, that the bird napper took Big Red to a better place where he's able to spread his wings and be amongst the trees in a beautiful place and is um, and is enjoying his life.